today we're going to make the perfect rice. Today we're going to make the perfect rice. Please let us know in the comments below if you've ever made a rice or a rice pilaf. I'm Chef Don McMillan and I want you to know that this dish is going to be perfect with anything that you need to cook rice for. For example, check out our video on the lemon basil chicken. That's coming up next. Here's what you need to make the perfect rice. We're using chicken stock. By the way, if you like, we do have vegetarian stock. That's just as good. Salt and pepper, very basic ingredients. Of course, rice. Now we're using a converted rice, but you may want to use basmati rice or jasmine rice. Any of those would do. In addition to that, we're going to use an onion and butter. And again, if you prefer not to use butter, margarine works or even olive oil. I love all of those ingredients. So here's our onion. I've got a great tip for how to dice an onion. Remember, you have two parts. You have the root and you have the flour part. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our knife. And by the way, you see the way I'm holding my knife? This is important. Do not pull your knife this way. It just goes waffling on your board. You want a firm grip because your most important tools are your hands. Keep that in mind. So we're going to cut off that part of the flour and then onion. And the onion has two parts. Here's our onion. It has two parts, the flour part and the root part. We're going to cut our onion. But before that, I want to point out a very important tool. This is our knife, and when you hold a knife, you want a firm grip, four fingers there and a thumb there. Not this way. This is the common way people cut, but as you can see, it waffles on the board, and because you have a sharp tool, your most important tools are right here, your hands. So we want to preserve those. So to do that, we're going to hold our knife correctly, and then we're going to slice off this part of the flour and then turn it around and right where the root comes out of the onion cut down to there. Now you can see I have the onion and I'm going to place it on my cutting board. My eyes are going to look right here at the root. Place your onion right at the center of that. Put your hand on top and just push down. We now have divided the onion into two pieces. Remember we're going to go from the root down. We're not going to go in the center so we want it from north to the south pole not at the equator. Now we have the onion and you see the root is still intact. We're going to remove the outside one or two layers of the onion skin because if this part does not cook up very well and I really don't use it for much. You could mulch it if you wish. I don't even use it for stock because I want it to be a flavorful stock not a bitter stock. Now with our onion there we're going to place it on the cutting board and I'm going to make an invisible line on this side of the root. This is to provide a notice for me that the point of my knife will stay on this side of the invisible line. I'm now going to make a series of vertical slices down. You put the point of the knife right there at that line and just pull forward just like this. And now you'll see why I left the root intact and that is because the onion will stay together as I turn it a quarter turn and again make vertical slices down. And if you look at this, we now have a perfectly diced onion. Just so easy to do like that. And once I get to that line, I just flip it over and cut around the root. Because now the root has done its job, I no longer need it. That will go into the compost pile as well. So. I'm going to cut up the other half of the onion because I am cooking two cups of rice and I will need more onions for this dish. Onions have a wonderful quality to them in that it has lots of sugar. And the sugar comes out when I'm sauteing my, my onions because the caramel will add this wonderful flavor to my dish. And you should know that everything that we do has to be about the flavor. Think about your grandmother's cooking or maybe your mom's cooking and you will see that this memory bank of yours, this umami, which we call it, 
is that flavor that just stays in your head. And that's what we're all about. We're creating flavor. Now, we have our onion already diced. And the next thing we need to do is we're going to use two tablespoons of butter. Remember, you can use olive oil. And look at this, the butter is already marked, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right there at the two tablespoons. And then we're gonna place it into our pot. All right, we're gonna place our butter into our pan. We now have it on high just to get it hot. So as the butter's melting, the next point we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our onions and saute them. All right, now we'll go ahead and place the onions right into our pot and let them saute. And we wanna just cook them until they have a nice little brown on them. So that's showing that the sugar is coming out of the onion and it's actually caramelizing. So when we're cooking, the onions, the next thing we're gonna do is add our rice. And a point I'd like to show you is that when you're measuring rice, you wanna say, well, how much rice did I really need? One cup of dried rice will make four cups of cooked rice. So keep that in mind when you're cooking. And also remember that because you need the proper size pot to do that. Imagine if I just had a small pot right here, it would only hold two cups of of rice and I put two cups and then the liquid in there, it would overflow and make a big mess. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, check out inside this pot, you'll see the caramel right in there. Look at the onions, how beautifully they are now browning. And I'm telling you, you should smell it right now. It just smells divine. So the next point I wanna do is to cook my rice with all of this goodness that's in there. Look at that. In goes two cups of rice. And now I'm going to brown off the rice. Now let me tell you, this is called pilaf. Pilaf is the process of browning off your rice before you add the liquid to it. There are many wonderful international dishes that we call for a pilaf, and this is that process. I know sometimes people just go ahead and put in the water and then throw in the rice after that, but we're going to brown our rice and I'm telling you what's happening right now is these every grain of rice in there is soaking up that wonderful caramel flavor from the onion and the butter so just do that now that I've done this I'm going to add the stock now we're going to add our stock there's gonna be a sizzle that's because all those grains are hot so let's get that in there so I'm using four cups of liquid to two cups of rice. The next ingredient is salt and pepper. And I wanna point out that if you're using stock that you did not make, we make our own, uh, check the label, because if it has salt in it, leave it out. So about a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and about a half a teaspoon of salt. give it a little bit of a stir. And it's important to add those ingredients now because you want them included into the rice as it's cooking. Look at this, our rice is now coming to a full boil. It's important that it comes to a rolling boil, just like this, and then I'm gonna turn my temperature down. And I just, let me take a look at the flame because I want the flame just to barely kiss the bottom of the pot. I'm going to cover it and put a timer for 18 minutes, and then you'll have perfect rice. While we're waiting for our rice to cook, let's chop up some parsley, because we're gonna show you at the end how to just decorate it and make it just look even so much more appetizing. So with parsley, you have two parts. You have the stem and the leaves. Most people chop off the stems and throw it away. Let me tell you, the stems have more flavor than the leaves. What can I tell you? So we don't throw the stems away. We save them, we cut them off, put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer, and use it when we make stock. And you gotta check out that video when that's coming up. 
So just cut off the leaves here. And by the way, before I've done all this, I wash them really good under running water or in a bowl of cold water for about three times, okay? Because they grow in sand and you don't want sand in your food, do you? So let's put these stems off to the side, which we're going to save. And the next step I want to show you is an easy way to chop parsley or just any leafy green vegetable or herb. So what we do is we put it into the palm of our hand and we roll it till it's about the size of a golf ball, right? Place that on your cutting board, holding your knife. And remember I told you, you've got to hold it firmly. And then just slice down like this, look. Slice down and down and down, turn it around and do the same thing. Now, you can also put your hand on top and then just rotate it back and forth like this. As I'm doing this, the aroma of this fresh parsley is just coming up. And let me tell you, this is the best way to use it. Don't use that dry stuff because it really has no flavor. It's used to color, to color maybe salads and things like that. But if you want flavor to your food, you want to use fresh herbs. They just do the job so much more better. All right, now our herbs have been chopped. Let's go ahead and place them into a little bowl. Makes it easy to deal with later. And then we'll wait for our rice. It's almost ready. 18 minutes is up. Let's check out our rice and just see how it's doing. Wow, isn't that beautiful? And I wish you could smell this aroma. It is so good. What usually happens is that when you be cooking the vegetables, we come to the top. So we'll just go ahead and reach in there and just stir that rice up so that we incorporate all of those vegetables from the top throughout. Now, after that's done, we want to plate our rice. So let's do this. We have a measuring cup or a device that you like. I'm going to take some spray and just spray it a little bit. That's so that the rice won't stick to the sides. And then we're just going to take our rice just like this and we're going to put it into our measuring cup. Just push down. This is a trick we use in some of the best restaurants in town because we know we eat with our eyes and it has to really look good and of course we already know it's going to taste good. Let's place this upside down on our plate right where we want it to go like that and you see how it makes a beautiful design. Take some of our chopped parsley that we did earlier and sprinkle it around and here it is our easy rice. Now of course you know you've got to like us and we want you to subscribe. So please let us know when you subscribe because I want to give you a personal thank you. And thank you so much for helping us watch this wonderful video where we're doing an easy rice. You're going to want to make this recipe. So please check out the rest of our recipes. We've got so many to offer. Remember this, they're all simple and delicious.